Now we want to introduce uh, Rayan, okay? Rayan, uh, if you can explain this to people, we are very grateful. Yes, come please. While you are studying, you stopped and you did an MSc, right? And then you come back to continue. Uh, yeah, and so, I'm Raz, yeah. Excellent. Do, mm. Tell them, what, how did you, because I've never heard of that happen before, which is very good. And secondly, you, the talk you're going to do, she's going to talk to us about experience of research in Sudan from her perspective. But the second one, which is very important to us, is the role of diaspora. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many diaspora. Last time we had the best she was talking. Part of the diaspora, they have to come forward. They have to, like she said, she went to the British embassy in Sudan while she's in the wedding of her brother. And she said to them, I am, this is my expertise. I have a degree in fashion and many, blah, blah, blah. What can I do? And they organize for her workshop. So what is the role of diaspora? This is very important to us. So the floor is yours, yeah, Raya. Between my fourth and final year at university at Newcastle, I did a master's of research in epidemiology. Uh, and I was lucky enough that, with the help of Dr. Ramona um, and some other supervisors at my university, to be able to do my research project in Sudan. So I spent the first half of the year doing modules, learning about epidemiology, statistics, global health, um, and other things like that. And I then went to Sudan for three months to conduct the research project of my choice. Um, this, uh, why I think it's important to talk about this kind of stuff, and I've been discussing it with some of the other young Sudanese around, is that uh, we all feel a kinship to Sudan, and I think as a diaspora, we're very, we're very good at remembering our roots and feeling proud of, of our country and wanting to do something that can help. But it can be really difficult to know what we can do that is useful. Uh, as young doctors, medical students, we have few practical skills. We can't go to Sudan and do operations. We can't run clinics. Uh, we can't do anything of that sort. But actually getting involved in research is something I think that we can do. And with the support of the Public Health Institute, like I've had as well, um, it is stuff that we can achieve even as young, young people. Um, and so, so um, why is research important? We all understand that it helps us provide evidence base. We can move forward from there. And it can help with things in terms of funding that can help us start new projects, implement new things in Sudan. And so that's why I think it's important. And that's why I think it's important for the Sudanese uh, youth to sort of get involved in that. Um, so briefly, just, just ha how to get involved in this kind of thing. You obviously need an idea of what is important to you, and I think the most important aspect is finding something that you're passionate about. Uh, I was passionate about maternal health, so I did my research in that, and I can speak a bit uh, about that as well. Um, from there, you have to look at the literature, look at what's missing, what literature has come out of Sudan, and, and normally that isn't actually that much, so there's a lot that we can do. Uh, and it's always helpful to find a supervisor, Dr. Nwuna is always very helpful, um, who can give you tips and contacts on um, who's good to work with. Uh, the, one of the most difficult things about working in Sudan is that things don't always go to plan, um, and that's the way, the way things are. Um, and you have to be persistent, and you can be disheartened, uh, and things can, be, can work out not in the way you expected it to, but it's really important to just keep trying uh, and to be hopeful, because you, you can achieve something. So just a little bit about my research. So I wanted to look at maternal health. Um, you know, the statistics speak for themselves. Women are still dying uh, during birth, during pregnancy and after pregnancy. And 99% of these deaths that occur across the world uh, occur in developing countries. And um, it's sad because most of these deaths are preventable. Uh, and why Sudan? I mean, I'm Sudanese, obviously. Uh, and I was looking at statistics, you know, we do actually have antenatal care services, um, but women don't attend all the time, and there must be reasons for why women don't feel like they can go. Um, and, you know, as we've mentioned before, there's a lot of discrepancy between people accessing private health services compared to government health services, and I wanted to know why people were sort of choosing to do that. So I wanted to look at why, why women don't access enough antenatal care. And actually, a lot of research that is done, and this is across the board, is quantitative, but I wanted to do something more qualitative to actually get a better understanding of, of women's opinions. 
to look at what barriers they personally face towards accessing antenatal care and to understand whether they had any expectations of government health services, private health services, how they felt after actually accessing, and what their opinions were on what methods we could use to actually improve the health care that they were accessing. Um, so how I did this was I ran focus group discussions with women, so I asked midwives in different localities to um, coordinate gatherings of about six to ten women uh, who delivered in the past year or so, and it was quite an interesting experience. I got to talk to them about what they felt, you know, who, who provided their care, what they thought about it, if they were satisfied, um, and other things like that. Uh, it was a bit difficult because it was all in Arabic and I was born and raised here. I do speak a bit of <laughs> I do speak Arabic, um, but medical Arabic is, is also quite different to that. And then I analysed the data um, in, in, a, in a different way. <coughs> so I, I divided all the themes that I found from my research into these sections. Um, and to look at really why people didn't attend. Um, to A lot of the time, I think women get blamed for not knowing enough, and that's why they don't access antenatal care. Um, and I wanted to look at whether actually women do know the benefits of antenatal care, it's just the, the services aren't provided for them. Uh, and then to look at what they thought of healthcare workers, the quality of the care that they were getting, um, and then how we could improve that. And Dr. Olamwana mentioned earlier about M Health, and that this was something that I spoke to women about as well, whether they thought using mobile phones to help with healthcare um, would be beneficial to them also. So I didn't want to spend ages talking about my research and, and everything that I found, um, because I wanted this to be more of a discussion about how to get involved in research. Um, but just to quickly summarise, you know, what I found from it was actually the women don't access antenatal care in Sudan for a lot of reasons. Um, there are physical barriers such as distance of uh, services, opportunity costs if they work or if they need someone to look after their kids and therefore they, can't, they have to provide something else for that, they, they can't quite afford that. Um, and an interesting thing as well was actually that religion plays a big part in it and sometimes people have this opinion like... Um, you know, it's kula ala Allah, like I'll, I'm going to leave it in the, in, the, in the hands of Allah and whatever happens, happens. And that's not, you know, and we need to work on how to... Uh, um, it's, it's all in God's hands or it's, it's, all, it's all up to God, you know. Um, but we need to provide a culture of actually people being autonomous and wanting to do something for their own health. Uh, and that actually that belief is not contradictory to religion at all and they can both play a big part together. What also um, was highlighted quite a lot in the discussions that I had with women, and I, this isn't meant as an insult to people working in Sudan because they work in tough conditions, they do a, a tough job, and, um, and it's, it, it's not easy, but actually they, the women felt that it was obvious that the, um, the people providing the health care were more interested in sort of the private work as opposed to providing state health care and that they weren't, they weren't punctual, they weren't empathic, uh, and that kind of also contributed to them not wanting to go to these appointments. Um, I think it's important to, to reflect on actually any of us, you can work in the NHS, you can work in America, you can work wherever, if you're uh, feeling understaffed or under-resourced or you're stressed or you're busy, your patients probably do suffer. I don't think that's a single factor to, to Sudan. Um, but yes, there's lots of future work that can be done. There's lots more research that needs to happen in Sudan. Um, you know, like I said, M Health, we can talk about that. Women were very happy to sort of uh, have that kind of experience. And I think there's lots for us, um, lots of future work still that can be done in maternal health. Um, a lot of the time I felt like this. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I wasn't sure that I was ever going to get anywhere with my research. Um, but you do have to keep going, and that's the most important thing. And so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.